Thank you, Jeff, for that very kind introduction. And ladies and gentlemen, you can see what happens uh, embodied by Deputy Secretary Rosen when you get good grades at Harvard Law School. <laughs> so thanks. Madam Secretary, thank you for your tremendous leadership. You've made a superb difference in our infrastructure investment. Thank you so much. And I want to join and welcome my colleagues, Chairman Collins, Chairman Diaz Balak, and soon to be Chairman David Price. As the only non-chairman, I'm glad to be included in your distinguished company today. Thank you very much. I'd also like to uh, acknowledge the, some of the state and local partners, particularly uh, Mayor Brown of Youngstown, Ohio. Thank you, Jamil. Thank you for being here. Finally, let me uh, acknowledge Peter Alviti, the director of the Rhode Island Department of Transportation. And everyone knows Rhode Island is a small state, the smallest state, so it should be no surprise when I tell you that Peter and I are high school classmates. So nice to see you, Peter. I want to express my appreciation for the hard work done by so many people to make it possible to provide a record amount of build funding for this year. First, it would not have been possible without the Bipartisan Budget Act that both sides of the aisle came together to support at the beginning of the year. Because of that deal, we have been able to set aside the destructive sequester level spending caps and actually increase the infrastructure investment in the T-HUD appropriations bill by more than $10 billion in fiscal year 2018. With these resources, we were able to provide a record total of $1.5 billion to the Competitive Build Grant Program. I hope we'll be able to replicate that success as we wrap up the FY 2019 appropriations process and negotiate a new multi-year deal to set aside the sequester and provide the resources for continued investment in roads and bridges, affordable housing, water infrastructure, and schools. Second, we would not be here without the extraordinary work of state and local officials who have worked to come up with compelling projects, not only to address existing transportation needs, but also to provide opportunities for future economic growth. In Rhode Island, for example, 2018 marks the 100th birthday of my predecessor, the late Claiborne Pell, and coincidentally, 2019 will mark the 50th anniversary of the bridge that is named for him. The Pell Bridge is the longest suspension bridge in New England and serves as the gateway to Aquidneck Island, home to the city of Newport and the towns of Middletown and Portsmouth. The project that Rhode Island will undertake will replace deteriorating infrastructure around the Pell Bridge. It will also help reshape access to the island, improve connections to the Naval Station Newport and the Naval War College, and open new areas for economic development improvements that will pay dividends not just today, but for the next 50 years. Now, there are many worthy and innovative projects in Rhode Island and throughout the country that still require the kind of funding that Build Act can provide. As has been noted, 91 projects will receive funding. That's great, but there are 851 applicants seeking a total of about $11 billion. Clearly, we can do more and we must do more. Now, I look forward to finalizing the 2019 appropriations bills and getting to work on the next budget so that we can build on build. Thank you very, very much.